Hello everyone, Vicki Ashard here with Nature's Best Art. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be doing my part two series uh, of my materials, talking about the materials that I use to paint uh, in watercolor. And the first video um, of my materials, I talked about my brushes, my palettes, uh, my paints, and my paper that I use. And this video is going to be talking about everything else. <laughs> that I uh, used to create the watercolor paintings. So let's get started. Okay, so I thought it would be fun to go back and forth with these paintings um, that I want to do uh, to show you a little bit about the materials that I use. Uh, now the first uh, painting, well let's talk about this. Let's talk about how I set these paintings up. Now if you go to my Let's Paint series um, I always talk about, you know, how I set up the uh, Strathmore watercolor card, which is, um, comes in, uh, I got mine at, in, on Amazon. It comes in, uh, you can buy them 50 in a pack or 100, and uh, they're, they're really uh, wonderful. I, I really like to use them. Um, they're 140 pounds. And uh, the cards are five by six and seven eighths. So um, what I do is I uh, put them on here, uh, and uh, I, I use a little masking tape, and I you know fold it over to um, make them flat. And um, let's see, my bone folder. Yeah, I also use a bone folder um, to crease them, so so, so they stay flat. And then what I do is I put uh, put masking tape uh, all all around the sides here, and I always put my um, arrow here so that I know you know what is the the the, the top part of the card. That's important because when you start putting that masking tape all around, this is actually on a foam board. Um, you can use anything you have. You know you can use cardboard uh, anything. But um, this is foam board, and um, so when you start moving it around, you'll forget what, what is the top of the card. And of course, you know because this part opens, you want to know uh, what what part is the top. So always put your arrow there. And um, so then what I do is I, I these are my drawings, um, and uh, then I put them on on the paper. With underneath the paper, now let me see if I can find, I have a whole bunch of stuff here on the side to show you all my things. <laughs> um, so um, what I use is graphite paper now, um, it's, you know, to transfer my drawing. I always use just a pencil, just a number two pencil. And I want to show you this too. Uh, this is a ex exact, I don't know if you can see this, X-A-C-T-O. Um, it, I got it at, I think I got it at um, Office Max. It's a really nice pencil sharpener. And I, I want to show you these two, uh, these um, high polymer uh, erasers. They're really nice when, when you draw. Uh, they don't leave smudges on, on your, you know, if you have to erase a, a little bit. Uh, they don't leave smudges on, on your watercolor paper. So those are real nice to use. And uh, like I say, I'm going to show you all the materials that I <laughs> use to create my watercolor painting. So um, there's going to be quite a, quite a bit that I'm going to be showing you today. Um, so, okay, so I drew, drew my paintings. You know, I sketched them on paper. And then I used this graphite uh, paper. Now, I used to get low Carnell, but I have not been able to find it anywhere. I don't think low Carnell makes graphite paper anymore that I can see. I looked on everywhere online. Anyway, so I picked up this uh, Royal Land Nickel uh, graphite paper and I like it a lot. So I was real hesitant. I thought, oh no, I just, because I that's all I used was a little Cornell. But um, this is really nice and you always put the dark side down uh, and um, you don't you don't want to use that um, carbon paper. Uh, make sure it's graphite paper. And what I do is I take a few pieces of tape, you know, and I tape this down, you know, like this. And then I put the graphite paper underneath. 
And uh, so then it, it um, transfers on, on my watercolor um, paper, okay? And um, so that's what I wanted to show you about that. And let me see where I'm going to put these. I have so many things all over the place. Okay, I guess right here is fine. Okay. Now, um, let's start out with what I'm going to do um, on this one first. I want to talk about this um, uh, masking fluid that I have. Masking fluid is to mask out any areas you, you want to keep white on your watercolor um, painting. Like, uh, for example, let me um, grab this one. This was my latest painting that I did. I call them glass bottles, um, but they're actually glass faces. And um, here is the highlights that I wanted to keep. Um, and so I use masking fluid for that. Isn't that pretty? Such a beautiful color, isn't it? That's a mauve, hooker's green, ultramarine blue. Um, and I just uh, really enjoyed uh, enjoyed that. This is not actually posted yet. This is my latest one. Uh, my husband posts all my um, paintings that I do in, in our uh, watercolor gallery on our website. Um, but he hasn't posted that one yet. It's, it's a brand new one. So anyway, I wanted to show you that because what we're going to do here is we're going to be... Um, using the, it's called Pueblo Drawing Gum. Uh, and I'm gonna be opening it up. What I do is I have this um, uh, piece of, it's, well, it's just a little bit of a um, face soap. And I'm always, I always use my um, older art, uh, paint brushes. Don't ever use your, your um, your regular watercolor brushes when you do this. These are so old and it makes them really like stiff. I think these were like, you know, child brushes that I had a long time ago. Um, and so what I, then what I do is I take this water here uh, and I, 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 I have a, a label on here called masking fluid because I don't use it for anything else. Any other, you know, for my painting or anything, this container. And I take a um, popsicle stick, and what I do is I mix it up, because it settles, so you want to mix it up, and it's really gunky a lot of times, okay? And what I do is I take my brush, put it in the water, and then I put some soap on it. Because if you put soap on it, it won't, the masking fluid won't stick to the brush. Okay. And then let me get this in frame here. And I'm sorry you can't barely see my lines. I, I, um, I, I did, if you look at that a little bit, it, it just gives me an idea where, you know, like the sky is going to be, the water some of my grasses and the sand it's it's a it's going to be a beach scene and we're not going to do the whole i'm not going to do the whole painting today and, and the other one i won't do the whole painting but just in the, some of these areas i'm going to show you um what i'm going to be doing uh to create this painting and then um, on my artist blog uh, i'm going to post these uh, paintings after i get them done and it'll probably be in a week or two okay so i dip it in in my container and I put it on there. And I'm, what I want to do, these are little people. You can't probably even see them. But I'm going to be masking them out because I don't want my, when I paint my, that's going to be where the water is. I don't want them to um, be covered up. And also, uh, you know, I can, and I'll show you how to, I'm going to take, I'm going to do, do this part. And then I'm going to show you um, how I get that masking fluid off. Okay, it, you know I'm I'm you know just I'm going to be talking with you. At, you know you, maybe some of you know about masking fluid. Uh, you may have done some paintings, but maybe some of you are just beginning your um, your watercolor journey. And um, so forgive me if I talk like you know you don't know anything i'm you know i'm sure some of you do but um i just want to now can you see that there's the people that are going to be on the beach there and then i want to 
put some here so we're going to have some reflections from the sun okay so the sun i put put my lines here on my tape it tells me where i want the sun about right here and then my reflections are going to be here from the sun you see how i did that okay so let's see Okay, you just kind of line it up there anywhere you want. Okay, looks good. Okay, so those are the reflections. Let me see if you got them. Let me put that up there for you. See? Okay, now then I just I rinse this off. And then what I'll do is, you know, I'll just, I, I just put this, um, I have bushes in the front of my house and I just kind of put it on, you know, throw it on the ground there on the, by the bushes. Um, so, and I always close that up. And that takes um, a little bit of time to dry. I'm going to dry it about maybe 15 minutes or so. And we're going to put that one aside. And I'm going to be showing you uh, this one now. These are carnations and leaves. Drew that a little heavier. You can see that a little better. And um, so let's get started with that. Now, this is a, a brush that I use um, for my carnations. Uh, and I, I, I do some side loading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and put the darker side down here. And I'm going to be going like this to my pet some of my some of my petals that I want the darker part there on the bottom bottom part of the petals. So I'm going to be picking up I'm going to be using uh, Windsor and Newton uh, Cotman student grade today. And um, let's see if I can Get that over here. Can you see that? Let's see. Probably can't see that very well. It's going to be, um, okay, I'm going to dip my brush in water. And I want to show you, I, I think I showed you this when I showed you my brushes and materials that I use. But I always use two um, water containers, one for the, um, the dirty water and one for the clean water. Okay. And these were just uh, from lunch made many years ago. I, I've been using those uh, for six years now. So I want to uh, dip my, um, let me see if I can show you this here. It's kind of important for me to show you. Okay, this I want, want to go on this uh, side of the brush. This is my darker color of the carnations. And then the lighter color is this color here. And I want to pick up this side of the brush. I turn this upside down. So that's the darker part there. And you can see that darker part right there. Okay, I'm going to be putting a little bit more um, more uh, mauve in, in in this color here to make it a little bit um, pick up some mauve here, but just a little bit make it a little little different color so you can see a little better the difference. Okay, so now these these didn't turn out exactly the way I would like them. I like this a little lighter here, and maybe I'm gonna change. I changed the color. I put some um, more mauve in the, my lighter color, so that um, let's see if you can see my palette here. This yeah, that one there, 
okay okay this is my lighter color this is my darker color the, the purple and um, I wanted to put more mauve in this uh, because I don't think the contrast um, is what I'm what I'm after what I want I want so I put a little bit more mauve so I'm gonna fix this a little bit and put some mauve in there there that's better you can see a little bit pinker compared to um, the one on the bottom which is darker this color here is um, mauve and ultramarine blue and then this color here is cerulean blue hue and a mauve mix okay so that I like that better now okay now let's um, get my brush again and I had a um, I turned it over because I forgot that I put the darker color on on this side these are actually the Royal um, La Nucker uh, angler angular brush and uh, you know it's on an angle you can see the angle here instead of just flat it's not a flat brush it's an angular brush and uh, I like it to use it for my carnations because it's a little stiffer than my watercolor brushes um, you know uh, when I was practicing a while ago you can tell the difference between the yellow and the orange here so um, I thought that turned out really good with this brush so I want to always use that brush so let's try this again now this is my darker color I'm gonna load it up on the you know on the corner there and then this is my lighter color which I made pinker because I think the contrast you can see it a little better I like that better okay so now I want to get the darker part here now, I, my hand is going to be in the way let me, let me see if I can I'm going to hold that up for you like that see how that goes like that okay and I'm going to just go over this part here a little bit more okay and the lines there it's a little bit more than what I drew here which is fine because I the the, the um, can I just want to go right here with that part and I get this little pinker Okay. Now I'm going to be um, doing that throughout my entire painting here. So that'll be really pretty for all the petals. And then when I get to the very um, smaller petals, uh, I'm going to be using this brush here. Now this is just a flat, and it's a Royal Lanecker. It's acrylic, but it'll um, the smaller the area is, the smaller the smaller the brush I'll use. So that'll be really pretty for that. Okay, let's uh, check our um, masking fluid and see if it's dry on this painting yep okay and uh, so now I want to actually I want to uh, paint the sky so I'm going to be using my other palette for that okay now we're going to work on our um, landscape uh, it's going to be a sky and some water some grasses and some sand here in the people and this is where we have the masking fluid on it's been about 15 20 minutes now um, I let it dry and uh, don't ever uh, use a hair dryer on this on the masking fluid but um, just let it dry by itself okay so let's work on the uh, sky now what I want to do is I want to get my brush wet 
and uh, so I wanted to use an eight. Uh, this is an eight round. It's a mimic by Creative Mart. And I get this area wet here for my sky. So we're going to be painting wet on wet. And I'm kind of looking at it on an angle so that I can see if it's shiny. If it's shiny, that means it's wet in that area. Don't want to miss any areas. And I'm actually going to turn this around because I want to get right up to the line where my water is going to be. And now you know paint just always goes where the water is. So if you look on it kind of like on an angle, you'd be able to make sure that you, there's the water there. Okay. Now of course it dried a little bit up here. I want to just wet it a little bit more there before I begin to put some color in it. Now I'm going to be beginning to put some just simply ultramarine blue on the whole thing. Now I can always spray a little bit of it of the water if I want whoops if I want to get more water on it okay I think it needs more water I want it quite dark because it was at night time Okay, and I'm going to be turning this around, getting by that line. Got quite a bit of water on my brush, so I took some off by just dabbing it on a towel. I just use um, my old wash rags. even looks like there's uh, clouds in the sky. And I like to make sure I go right up to my, um, my, my tape, okay? Now, if I wanna put, um, so I think what I'll do is I'll put a few more clouds up here. So I'm dabbing it with my Kleenex. Okay, and then I think what I'm going to do is add this color here to my sky. I'm going to get that a little bit more. I think I'm going to put it on here so I can get it just. I just want to add a little bit to that. This is um, it's cerulean blue hue and permanent rose. Okay, just a little bit here. So I did see, well, this is um, a picture in Frankfurt when we went to Frankfurt, Michigan and saw the, uh, oh, we always look at the sunsets. And then um, it was actually more purple on the bottom, I remember the picture that I took. So I want to put that here. I'm going to be adding a little bit more water to that too, I think. Just because I don't want to put a lot, a lot of color there on there but um, so let's just uh, just add a little bit here on the bottom part of the picture ok 
Okay, just gonna spread that out just a little bit and turn it. I like my sunsets to be very colorful if, if uh, you know, when I take my photos of the sunsets, oh, there's just beautiful color in Frankfurt, Michigan. Uh, the Sleeping Bear Dunes area, if you're ever in that area, uh, it, it's worth the trip to see the sunsets. <laughs> there, isn't that pretty? I like that. Okay. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to dry this. Okay. Okay. So, let's see, I think I'm going to actually want that a little softer right there. See how I make that softer? I don't want any really lines, but I want it to be, you know, just soft. Soft look. There we go. A few clouds. Okay. And this part here, this, this I like that. That's gonna, there's gonna be grass there anyway. Okay, you see that? Let me see if I can show you. Let's see the different colors. Pretty. Okay. And um, let me dry it. Now what I do, this is a hair dryer. Okay. Okay, it's dry. Now, there's going to be a sun in there, right? Because the sun is setting. So, I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, so, I use this um, metric ellipse. This is my husband's. He was an engineer. And I guess he used it for that, you know, for some of his work. But, okay, so here's my um, reflection. And I think I wanted about, oh, maybe 19, I think. This would be too big, 22. I think I think 19, because it's small. It's small. You know, it's a small. It's a five by seven, basically. You know, it's a card. So let's see here. I want it above the reflection, and I want to put it right there, the number 19. And I want to get my magic eraser. Now these are. Um, you can buy these at Target. I think I bought this in um, our local um, food store. I bought this one, I remember, uh, at Kroger. And what these are, are um, magic erasers or cleaning erasers for household, um, you know, your I, I've never actually used it <laughs> around the house. I just brought it, you know, in the uh, craft room here. And um, so what it is, are these are blocks and you can cut them any size you want. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, try to get this uh, uh, this um, paint out uh, and so what I'm gonna do see is it right where I want it yep right above there uh, I, I'm gonna dip this in water the end and I'm gonna squeeze it and I'm gonna just go around like that You don't want to be too rough with it because now even like on the Strathmore paper it, it'll like pill a little bit. So let's see what that looks like. There we go. There's my sunset. And so I just wash it a little bit because um, I, I've, I've been doing this for a while now using this um, you know the you know as as my template because um, I've made some sunsets that aren't very round you know they I don't I like them round okay now what we're going to do is we're going to um, I like to put some lines on here I'm actually gonna I'm actually going to um, dry this a little bit first I think just a little bit okay all right, so I'm going to make uh, the um, sunset. You know, sometimes in sunsets they have these uh, lines that look really pretty. 
you know, across the sky there. So I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to make this a little darker here, though, I think. Let's see. I think I want that a little darker. You know, so... Mm, a little bit darker. Okay. I'm going to start making these lines. Across the sun. And let's see. Move that very to the airy edge. Sometimes you forget forget to do that. Okay, and then let's see, maybe a little bit of this color. Going across the sky. Mm, let's see. And maybe some purple. It was getting quite dark, so I want to just make uh, my sky darker. And then a little bit of purple on the bottom. sort of blends. And let's turn this around again. That purple by the, the watercolor. So it's a little dark there. Now some sets, some set, some sunsets are, um, you know, oranges and yellows and reds. In this picture, though, I saw a lot of these, uh, the purples and the blues and those pink, pinks in there. I like to draw this to the edge there or paint that to the edge there we go now let's see if I like that I do I think I like that I'm gonna make a little bit right there I don't want it to um, be a let's see here a little bit more blue there to contrast. You gotta be careful because you don't want it to um, to make blooms. So 
blooms happens when you have too much water and it's not dry when you do wet on wet okay I like that do you like that I think it's pretty okay now we're going to dry this and um, that dry and then we'll do our water okay just to show you how that looks okay all right so now let's um, paint our water I'm actually using three uh, watercolors um, for this, uh, paints for this. Um, my ultramarine blue, I'm going to put here, and the cerulean blue, the lighter, and then um, the mauve and ink tense mix for the darker. And I'm going to actually, we're going to put some of this color in and this color in the reflections. Okay, so let's see here. And now this is when we can just paint right over our, make sure that's dry so it doesn't go in your sky. Right over the masking fluid to preserve those reflections. And to preserve the, the people that I want to paint later on. Kind of looking at it at an angle, making sure that there is the water there. And this is going right up to the sand. These are going to be where my bushes are going to be. Well, you know, the, the grass is on the, on the sand what they are. Okay. Alright. So let's pick up our ultramarine blue. Let's put a little cerulean blue in there. And just go over the people. We don't have to worry about that. Now this is going to be quite a dark um, quite dark because um, it was you know getting to be nighttime so we want to make this this quite dark so I'm going to be putting some uh, it's actually called uh, ink tents and mauve you know to make that a little dark for the dark water that's quite dark and my in my pit my photo it was quite dark and we do want it to be a nice contrast against the sky there
and let's see so this is the sand I'm gonna make that like this kind of wavy there okay and what we're gonna do is I saw a lot of Um, like reflections. So we're going to pick up our number two mimic and we're going to put water on it. And here and there we're going to just kind of make these lines. Because there's like these reflections from the sun, like lots of reflections, and um, it'll make make it look like there's little waves there too. Just all over. It's going to take just a bit of time to do this. Now, if there's any water on your ferrule, just go like that so it doesn't. you know, onto your painting. Water was quite dark. I could actually even put Little Payne's Gray in it if I wanted to, but think I will because I don't see any really dark spots in the sky so you just keep putting your brush in the water and then so it takes some of the paint off see it's just a, a lot of reflections. I think I like that now. That's quite a bit of reflection, see? There we go. Can you see that? Okay. And so, now let's um, dry this. Now the uh, masking fluid, I want to show you, you use one of these rubber cement uh, erasers. And as you can tell, I have a lot of gunk on it from the last painting. I never did take that off. Um, so I want to show you what I do is I just take this uh, Tim Holtz uh, scissors and all you do is you cut it away to use it, see? you don't want that gunk on there when you go to use it so and this is really nice to use um, you could take take the masking fluid off with your finger but it's it's pretty hard it, it gets hard on your finger to do that so um, this is the part here I want to use just simply can you see that yeah with you know, you just kind of use it as like an eraser. And that kept my white spots, which I wanted. Now I'm going to not do that on the people because uh, I'm not ready to paint them yet. Um, so there's the reflections. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add my um, my pinker color and you know my purpler color that I have in the sky, so that picks up a little bit of that. So it looks like reflections from that. Okay, so let's see here. I want to use so oh, probably my pink one first. A little bit of that and that'll get the water a little darker which is fine because that's what that was dark water ok 
Okay. And then let's put in a little bit of this uh, purpley color. Hmm, that's quite. Okay. Down here. Okay. I still want to keep keep a, a little white because I think uh, that the reflections, you know, keeping them white is nice, you know, with the sun. Okay. All right. So, okay, so that is um, how you do a, a sun. Um, and then uh, it's how you paint wet on wet. And um, you put the masking fluid and take that off. I showed you that part. And so I will finish this painting and I'll post it on my uh, artist blog, okay? But there's some, some other things that I want to show you. So uh, remember I showed you the uh, purple and the uh, mauve uh, painting, uh, side loading, and that I'm going to be painting those both of those carnations with the pretty leaves. So that's going to be really pretty. And um, so I'm excited about uh, painting these, uh, finishing these up. And um, But there is there's more that I want to show you that I use, okay, in the paintings. Now, uh, for the sand part, what I'm going to be doing is uh, using my toothbrush. Uh, and so for the sand, let's see, the sand colors are, let's see here. So my sand colors are raw sienna and burnt umber, or, or raw sienna and burnt sienna. So I'm just going to be showing you what I'm going to be doing. That's the sand color. And then I'm going to be drying it. And so then when you um, when you do this, you want to cover your um, area with your hand, you know, or paper, um, you know, and and you want to pick up your toothbrush, put it in water, and then put it on in your, I'm going to be using burnt umber. And a little raw sienna in here. And I'm going to be spattering it, you know, with my thumb. Can you see that? And these are going to be the um, pebbles. Now see how it goes all over, right? So if this was, you know, some of my painting, I would want to actually, you know, cover, cover it and make a, make a mask so it doesn't go on that, you know. But so that's what you do um, to make your, your pebbles. So you can, you can use your toothbrush while, when you're painting. And um, now um, I'll show you this painting here what I did was let's see let me get it here it's my gathering of flowers painting so what I did I had a path there and I used um, the toothbrush on there for the pebbles see how I did that okay then then the other thing I want to show you on this painting here um, remember we used our masking tape to, um, you know, put around, um, around the picture that I'm going to be painting here to, to, um, because I like a nice border. That's, that's what makes a nice border. And so what I like to also do in my paintings, um, see this bike area right here? Now this is, um, I made a video called Speed Painting, Gathering Flowers. 
you can watch that if you want. Um, so what I do is I, I took my uh, my masking tape because this this was a little tricky to um, to paint the bike um, this area right here. So what I did is I, I put masking tape on this side and this side. You can also use mask and then I painted it. So this was covered and this was covered, this side and this side. And I painted this area right here. Um, and it gave me a nice line. So you can also use your masking uh, tape for that too. Okay, and let's see what else can I tell you I use. Now I, I um, let's see, well, I do use a credit card, um, an old uh, credit card to scrape my uh, veins in. Um, for example, I will paint a leaf and uh, let's see, I can use this, this paint here. Let's see here. Now while it's wet, You can scrape in some leaves or some veins. Okay, so it'd be like this. Veins. And then when you put your second, you know, your glaze on, well, I, that would dry. Let me dry this. That would dry. And then you would put more paint on there, anywhere you want. And it shows up better, see? It makes your veins. So that's a real nice tool to use. Okay. Now I also have these, um, uh, let's see if I can find one. These kind of brushes where they have the points on them and you can use those also. But I, I find that those are a little harsh uh, on the paper. Um, so I, I actually prefer the credit card. So now, um, I, like, like the ma the masking fluid, uh, as you as you remember, is good to to preserve your whites. And but you can also use, um, you know, Chinese white in Windsor Newton Cotman, uh, if you want, or you can use uh, the Gaucho paint. This is a, a um, an opaque acrylic paints. Now, I haven't used these for any paintings. I've just used the white white one, the white color. Um, I did hear, however, if you, if you do use these, um, instead of putting them in a palette, um, it was suggested that you use something like this so that you can close uh, the container always um, so that they won't dry out. Um, so uh, one day I'll, I'll, I'll use these paints, but they do have white in here if you need a heavier white. It's, it's an opaque white. But um, if you do use white and, you're, and you want to put your painting in a contest, um, it, it might be a rule that you cannot use you know, white paint uh, in, in watercolor. Uh, okay, I just want you to know that. So, um, or sometimes when you when you are judged for a um, an art fair, um, they are probably you know some people might be particular with that. Um, so now the other thing, let's see, what else can I tell you? The sponges. I use these sponges. Um, they're called artist sponges to make my um, to 
make my you know uh, my bushes let's see if I can show you that a little bit and get that you know dab it on here see you get that wet your paint and then you know these would be bushes and make real nice bushes okay so um, that's real nice and then you just uh, dip it in your water when you're done or clean clean it later um, so remember now to use Kleenex when, when you want to make your clouds or you can use a paper towel oh this kneaded eraser is nice for um, it's called a kneaded eraser and if you do um, uh, just a second, let me get that painting again that I'm going to be doing. If you think that your lines are going to be, now see, I don't mind my lines being dark here. Um, however, this is going to be uh, yellow in here. And so I might actually, you know, take take some of this uh, these lines out like this. this. You just push it down. And it, it um, instead of erasing with an eraser, you can take some of that out. See there? It's beginning to be a little less visible. So I, I probably will go around. I, I'll probably, you know, get it kind of pointed and go around and just push that there if um, if I don't want that too too dark okay so that's the kneaded eraser and what else do I use um, credit card I told you about that now when I put my paints in the palette um, I don't think I talked about this in my um, first part maybe I did my part one I, I put my paint in and then what I do is I um, use this water bottle to squirt it a little bit and then I, I um, stir it. Uh, some artists probably don't but I do. I, I just like to do that. I just, <laughs> I just have a feeling that if I don't do that it's going to dry out on me but anyway so that's what I do. I'm trying to think of some, oh th this is um and we'll t you know what we're going to talk about something oh I, I have to talk about it right now actually because uh, there's one thing that I didn't talk about but I, I'll talk about that in a minute okay what I want to show you I'm going to get my other palette out because uh, what I need to do is these my M Grand Professional paints. Um, I I use a lot. I, I I mostly paint with M Grand Professional. I just love the these paints because they have honey in them and um, they don't dry out on your palette at all. So I am going to try to get these out. Um, I I have been trying to get these out. But I, I could not get the last part of these, you know, the paint out of here. So, um, I went online and I uh, saw these paint saver keys. There's these here. And the, if the whole package of 24 of these, and they come in three sizes, was $10. So, I'm going to be getting the paint out of these um, tubes because that there's quite a bit, actually, of paint in each one of these. So I am going to be doing that now just to show you uh, that it can be done because I tried it already and I'm just thrilled with it, but it gets a little messy. So all right, let's see, Hansy Yellow Deep. So I'm going to, well, let's put this in here first. Let's put it in the tube. I wanted to tell you about this because I just think this is such a good idea to have these. Now see it's even coming out here which oh boy that's going to be a problem all right i'm gonna this is going to get really messy so let's see actually i should put it on this side because i'm right-handed and to roll it this way 
is better for me. Okay. Now, Hansa Yellow Deep. I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to squeeze that out of here. Look at that. See? That's like one painting, right? Full of paint. Okay, it got it really far up there. Look at that. Can you see that? It's now allowing me to push it more up. See if I can get one little, oh, look at all that coming out. Oh my goodness. I just love this, these things. I think that's about all I can do. So um, I just wanted to tell you about that because uh, it's a little frustrating to know that, look at all that paint I got out of there. And I guess I won't do that. <laughs> it's, it's really messy. Uh, I won't do it while I'm um, on camera here. To all of these. I was actually going to show you on all of them, but it is so messy that uh, off camera, you know, I will um, do the rest of those. But isn't that so cool? And and you know those um, those those were these are only like there's ten twenty four in a package. It was only ten dollars. I think I got it on Amazon or maybe Jerry's Artorama. Okay, so um, I want to show you that. And there's one other thing that I see in my, I have a container here, um, full of stuff. Oh, I actually have two more things in here. I'll actually show you what I've been using. This is, a, this is my um, tray. My, my daughter and my husband made this for me. You know, I'm a press floral artist also. And they took um, one of my... Uh, pictures that I did. This is one of my press floral work. And they made this box. They actually made this box. And, um, you know, they stained it. And it's a tray. And I use it for everything. You know, every time I want to put a lot of stuff in. Look, it has like holes here and then you you hold it. You know, it's like for serving tea or something. But you know how that goes. Everything gets in the craft room, right? <laughs> But I, okay, so I have two more things in there that I, I don't want to not tell you about. Um, what I discovered, where's, where did I put my palette? Oh, okay, These are called uh, the cotton swabs. Uh, anyway, what I found that, you know, I wanted to clean my palette out the other day. And um, I had some paint in the corners right in here. I could not get that out with... Um, uh, with Kleenex, I you know I, I squirt the water and I use the the Kleenex to get get the paint out. So I use this cotton swab swab in the corner. I think because they're very square. My other palette is kind of like rounder here in the corners, so that you know the paint comes out. But uh, of course you make sure that the the paints you know out of out of your wells, your mixing wells when you're done. And uh, so you want to get any any paint off of there. Um, and you, you can use this cotton swab. I found that helpful. Now, um, this X-Acto knife I use if um, I get, like, say, for example, and this doesn't happen, I think maybe only a couple times it happened, and very, very slight, where the tape will raise a little bit. And when I'm painting, it'll, it, it was raised and it got on my border. It only happened actually a couple times. I make sure, you know, it's quite down, you know, well down uh, there when I paint. So it doesn't happen. But um, you can, you know, when you take your paint off at the end of your painting, you can actually uh, scrape, you know, on your watercolor paper a little bit. Don't be real rough with it. But you can get that paint off of your border if it gets on your border. So that's, that's an X-Acto knife. That's why, why I use that. Um, now, we did talk about uh, the Magic Eraser, you know, to get the, uh, the sunset out. It's also good for, like, you know, if you make um, mistakes. But this is, this is quite abrasive, so you want to be gentle with this on your paper. Uh, and the other thing that I have is a Moxine's Mop to get um, paint off. 
it's a little bit more abrasive you know than using your um, your uh, Creative Mart uh, brushes your watercolor brushes this is softer um, it does take paint off but when, when the paint is settled on there are two or three glazes uh, sometimes I'll use if I want to take some paint off uh, sometimes I'll use this one this is a 3 8 inch as a low Cornell and I do want to find a smaller one for my smaller areas uh, what else can I talk about now these are actually I think I uh, called them opaque um, acrylics they're actually opaque uh, watercolors um, so um, just want to correct that so I think I have talked about everything that I want to talk about now make sure that well I do use my color chart um, that I made you can uh, watch that color chart video that I made on, on my color chart uh, uh, that's actually another video, but um, I do use it to get my colors that I want. Um, you know, I blend two colors together a lot of times. I'll do that. And then what I'll do is I'll, um, for these two paintings here, um, and also all my other paintings, is I write down what colors I want in the painting, and I make sure that I have a reference of all my paintings. This is the carnations one. So I already figured out, you know, my paints for my um, my greens that I'm going to do, um, etc. So um, and I and I actually put these in my uh, file, my my accordion file, along with my drawing um, of my um, of my uh, painting that that I do, you know, that I showed you today. So that's always uh, left in my 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 file, uh, my accordion file that I have, you know, along with uh, with the, with the colors that I use. I started that oh about oh maybe I color I painted for like you know three four years, and I decided that I wanted to keep um, a record of the colors that I use. So and I do talk about that um, when I made my color chart um, uh, video. So uh, I think I actually talked uh, about everything. Um, don't forget to use, you know, your spray bottles. Um, I do use a, uh, if I do um, use white, the Chinese white, um, I do use a different uh, water bottle entirely for, for that instead of um, these uh, if two. I don't dip my, um, this is, see, this is my, um, my, uh, um, Oh, my uh, dirty water, and this is my clean water. See, so I, I kept uh, kept that really clean, and, and, and this I use for my, my dirty water. You can just put any, any, any kind of color you want in your dirty water. But what I do for my, when I use my, I'll uh, use my Chinese white, if I do that and have that on my brush, I use actually this. I, I have it labeled, and I don't use this for anything else. I open this up, and I and I rinse it in here because um, you can actually if you you know use it on your dirty water and for some some reason or other it gets in, in it might get in your clean water your your white and everything is um, makes it your your paints opaque and you don't want that okay that's another thing to remember so use a separate um, container for just just when you use it that if you use that white paint but remember you can always use the masking fluid um, to preserve your whites. Okay, so um, I think that's it. I had a lot of fun uh, preparing for this, um, thinking about what I was going to uh, tell you. And on my Let's Paint series, uh, I do go into quite a bit of detail every time I um, um, make a painting. And so you can learn from that too. Um, so I just hope that you enjoy your paintings. I hope that you learn a lot and um, you will become your own artist. You will you will have your own style. You may not even want to, you might want to uh, draw right on this instead of using um, the graphite paper. So the more you paint, uh, the more you will develop your own style and that's what you want. Um, I can give you ideas, I can give you suggestions, I can tell you what I use. Um, but, um, you know, you'll find uh, several different uh, ways of um, painting uh, with maybe several different tools. Um, 
and uh, I just hope that you enjoy it. Um, now, remember, if you do use a toothbrush, um, ma make sure you use an old one, of course. <laughs> um, so anyway, I think that is it. I think I uh, said everything I wanted to say. I just uh, hope that you'll join me um, often, and please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Until next time, happy creating!